Over the centuries, the deep connections between physics and music have been noted by many, particularly in the way that both endeavours are underpinned by a mathematical language. In a new collaboration, the two activities will meet head on as the internationally renowned composer Edward Cowie is teaming up with particle physicist Brian Foster and the violinist Jack Liebeck. Cowie has been commissioned to produce a major series of works for violin that will trace the history of particle physics from the late 19th century through to the present day. Brian has arranged for the three collaborators to meet here at Oxford University in the Master's Lodge at his own college, Balliol. In addition to his physics research, Brian is also an accomplished violinist and he will be performing the music alongside Jack. Today Edward is going to present his new compositions and Brian and Jack will have their first tentative efforts at playing the pieces. So you then crescendo at the end of it. So the collaboration came about um, in two ways. I mean, of course, I've been working with Jack Liebeck for a long time, since 2005, when we started working on World Year of Physics lectures. Um, but then Edward Cowie uh, uh, contacted us, and I know he'd been working before on, on uh, a project to do with physics called Rutherford's Lights with an old friend and colleague of mine, Michael Burry from the University of Bristol. So I knew of Edward, and he contacted us to say, would we be interested in working with him on, on a, another project to do with physics uh, and music, and of course, since that's what Jack and I have been doing for a long time, we were very interested by the, op the option, and we met um, in a, uh, a, co a cafe somewhere in Milton Keynes, if I remember correctly, uh, where it was passing through, and we had a long discussion about the possibilities um, and decided it was really an interesting idea, and so the idea was born. I, as well. Absolutely because, no reason why. Because then uh, well, we Edward Cowie is no stranger to physics having studied the subject at Imperial College in London before focusing his energy on his artistic activities. He has long believed that there are deep connections between mathematics and music, and in this latest work, Edward has composed a series of 20 short pieces which he says are directly inspired by particle physics. As he explained to Brian and Jack... Like we wouldn't be sitting here, A, if it weren't for you two being game to give it a go, but we wouldn't be sitting here if I hadn't, if you like, tested the possibility of making sound which in a sense was directly informed or yeah. connected to my understanding or misunderstanding <laughs> <laughs> of particle physics, you know, which is an extraordinary journey and that's an amazing history, I think. At what level is my composition aligned with particle physics? Um, the music is shaped by the activity of particle physics, by which I mean if you take the Democritus question, if you divide something half by half by quarter by quarter and it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until you arrive at something which is apparently indivisible, the tiniest thing, and you call that an atom, it's very easy actually to think of a musical structure which can do that same thing. You have a piece of musical material, you halve it. You halve that, and you halve that, and you halve that, and you halve that, until it gets shorter and shorter and shorter, becomes more compressed, more momentous, more minute, and you have, if you like, a, a subatomic particle music at the end of it. In terms of the way um, uh, subatomic particles are observable in their collisions and their traces and their impacts, music can do the same thing. You can make music which has a, a device into which it is forced to impact, fragments fly off it and they have behaviours which can parallel. So there's a literal as well as theoretical relationship between particle physics and the way I compose. As well as discussing the concepts, the collaborators are also here to get down to business and start practising the music and discussing who will play what in the concerts. Given the strength of the individual personalities, it was never likely to be plain sailing and Brian, it seems, had taken issue with his part. Something to do with remaining stuck on a G-string. <laughs> Brian sent me and said, I've got a bit of a problem with the, a, lot of the, a lot of my part being on one note, yeah. that people will think he's still learning to play on a G-string. <laughs> yeah, so just um, the, the first, you know, the first 10 the or 15 whole, bars absolutely. Are, just, are just open G-string, which I, is I, the first thing that people play. I wonder if it should be swapped round, actually, I, as well. Absolutely because, no reason because why. Because then... Well, well, we don't need to swap it all. I mean, no, but I, mean, I think it would, it would be good if you started... Because especially as with the event, 
I mean, I will have been playing the whole absolutely whole time. So mm -hmm. at the end, it would be really nice if I sort of start by a company. Oh, it looks like a company. Well, it um, sounds like a company. Um, yeah. yeah. Well, but the alternative is still to. to that we just swap the tune between each, each other. Yeah. Because this, it sort of repeats until, it, until there. Then, then things start to happen in both parts. Yep. But that first page, we could alternatively swap. Mm. It still comes back, this, this grand... No, but it's fine at that point. It's just yeah, that yeah, I, yeah, I was just yeah. slightly worried that, you know, people... That one of the interesting points of the way we do these lectures is that people don't expect me to play the violin. And so when they I... do now. I, well, <laughs> only those have heard it before. Yeah. There's still, you know, you still get a sort of interest when, when the lecturer who's been telling them about physics for a long time suddenly picks up the violin and starts playing. And, and as it stood, it would look a bit as if I was, all I was going to do is play an open G string the whole time. And, that, mm. you know, people mm. might think, oh my God, mm. is he going to do this for the next 20 minutes? Mind so, you, I, I mean, I, I'm going to sound capricious, but I, mm. I, I think... Uh, not many beginning violinists can play a very um, atmospheric sol ponticello. G. No, and that can I, that can I necessarily. Uh, well, <laughs> well, I don't know that. So, Brian, yours starts with a little, doesn't it? Yeah. Yep. Well, he's got his so under. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah. Except, yes, okay. Then crescendo at the end of it. Yep. To a, uh, yep. And that's yeah, just a tiny little So, what does Jack make of Edward's compositions so far? I think uh, Ed's compositions look really um, creative and impressive. Um, I have just come back from travelling for the whole summer uh, a few days ago, so I uh, haven't really had a chance to really uh, practice them very much. Um, but I've played through bits and bobs, and we've talked in our discussion earlier. Um, and I think they look really creative and um, uh, and musical at the same time. Because sometimes I suppose uh, something that is inspired by science could end up being kind of dry and theoretical. But um, I think there seems to be a lot of colour and interest in them. So I'm really looking forward to uh, digging deeper into into the depths of of uh, the music. Um, and also I need to do a bit of research on um, the theory behind you know each movement uh, so that I can understand and try and work out what he's trying to say. So what's clear from the creative process so far is that the three collaborators share a deep passion for the music. How it is similar to science in some ways but very different in others. A lot of people don't realise about music, um, I know that Brian does because he plays it, is that music looks like an incredibly precise set of signs. You know, you've, got, you've got your time signature, you've got how fast you're supposed to play it, you've got the notes you're supposed to play, how loud, how soft, how long, or whatever. But as we know, it's not. Mm. Um, it's, it's got all sorts of um, inbuilt imprecisions to it. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, that's what makes music alive. Yeah, it's the imprecision that makes it sound like one person or another. Exactly, it? It, it exactly. Almost, beautifully precise it would sound exactly the same I suppose. Yeah. I mean the composer's ideal actually is that when they finish composing a piece you you say goodbye yeah uh, and you give it to another person and that, uh, that person realizes it becomes their piece yeah so I think the way in which the general public can really benefit from this is, is, is in a variety of ways I hope that they'll find the music fascinating it certainly seems interesting so far um, secondly, there will be a narrative there which will explain the development of, of physics and particle physics, which I think is a fascinating story, the various extraordinary um, imagination of the scientists who really take, took the leaps of understanding which we uh, led us to the current situation we're in. And if we then think about what the next steps are, I think we've, we've now got to the stage where we have an outline of, of what the project will look like. We, we have drafts of the of pieces of music. What I need to do now is to um, think of the narrative which we'll put into the lecture, which will then tie all the pieces of music together and tell the story which the music reflects. Um, and then the idea would be that we would perform it in a variety of uh, locations. Surely we'll have a uh, world premiere in, in the UK. Um, we've funded it partially through Oxford University and, and the rest will be funded by my uh, chair in Hamburg, the Humboldt chair in Hamburg. Um, so we'll obviously also do another uh, major performance in, in, in Hamburg, in Daisy, my laboratory. Um, and uh, then hopefully we also expect to go to CERN and also perhaps to the US.
Well, it was great to see the level of thought that goes into this kind of composition. I'm sure the finished work will be a great intrigue to scientists and musicians alike.